My name is Matt, and I'm one of the lucky ones. I was lucky to have known my maternal grandmother, Hedwig Schmidt. She was a stout German woman with the most beautiful, tender heart, and all of her grandchildren called her Mamo. When I think of motherly love, I think of Mamo. I think of my grandmother. My mom, God rest her soul, uh, love her to pieces, but she was overwhelmed. My mom and dad divorced, the kids, it was a terrible divorce and tumultuous. She was the only steady hand in all of that. She was always loving. She never took sides. She literally held the family together. Anytime anyone was sick, anytime anyone was in need, whether it was her family, someone from the church, a neighbor. As soon as the neighbor got sick, a pot of chicken and dumplings went over. And as a small child, I spent every second of my life at her house because that's the only place I wanted to be. Every day after school, I could have walked home, which was two and a half blocks away, or to Mamo's house, and I walked to her house. And one day, I showed up, ran to the back door, and knocked, and she, uh, she wasn't there. I rattled the door, knobbed, she didn't come. I tried, it was locked. And she was always home. Mama wasn't home that day, and I went, and my six-year-old mind goes, oh my gosh, has she been kidnapped? Did she die? She never leaves the house. Why would she not be here? And I didn't know what to do, so I sat on the back step, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and it started to get dark. And I remember it was autumn because leaves were blowing, dry leaves were blowing, and the light started slanting, and the backyard started getting dark, and I waited, and I didn't know what to do. And I, I, my hands were folded, and I kind of said, God, I'm, I'm getting scared, what do I do? And I heard that little voice inside me go, get up right now and walk to the front of the house. Without question, and I did. And I got up and I walked to the front and just as I stepped on the sidewalk in front of the house, my mother's car pulled up. And she goes, there you are. I've been looking everywhere for you. What are you doing? And I go, I, I, I don't know if grandma's been kidnapped or if she's died, mama, I don't know where she is. And she says, her friend from church is sick. She's over there taking care of her. And I went, okay, everything's great. But I remember it was at her house is the first time I ever heard that little voice inside me and learned to trust that. If angels came down to earth and opened a bakery, it would smell like my grandmother's house. She cooked all the time and especially baked and she'd bake these German kuchens. And I remember her taking my hand and going out, poke it deep because the, with those holes is where you drop the butter, the cinnamon, and the sugar, so that when it baked, the dough would kind of spread over that. I remember this loving, tender, sweet woman on Saturday night loved to watch wrestling. I'm talking about the old Haystack Calhoun and Dick the Bruiser and that bad fake wrestling. And she would sit there in needlepoint and yell at the TV, watch out, he's, he's got a scraper in his hand. And that's the only time I ever saw her raise her voice or get, get rowdy. At the end of the day, she would allow herself one beer. And she would pour her beer at the end of the day. And she had a baby mug, a little beer stein that was very small, that was mine. And she would take a spoon and scoop off the foam from her beer and put it in my little mug and we would clink and have a drink. And then I'd always have a foam mustache and then she would lean over and we'd laugh and she'd kiss the mustache off. One Easter she bought me an Easter outfit. It was a little yellow and green checked sports jacket, my first sports jacket and with a pair of shorts. And I remember her taking me into church and she, I think she was showing me off. She was kind of parading her grandson in his new Easter jacket. And I remember just sitting in the pew and getting sleepy-eyed, as I always did in church, and falling over and putting my head on her lap. And then while the preacher would drone on, she would rub my back, rub my back, and before I knew it, I'd be out cold. Years later, I got word she had died. My mother calls, and she and her sister had gone to my grandma's house to pack up her belongings, to fold up all of her clothes and donate them. And when they were there, they opened the top drawer of her dresser and uh, it was her linen drawer. Folded up in the corner of that drawer was my Easter suit that she had 
bought me when I was three. So that every day of her life, when she opened that drawer to get dressed, she would look at that and touch that. How lucky am I that I had this woman in my life, especially as a small child, because her thumbprints are all over my heart. She molded and shaped me. Her thumbprints are there. And I am lucky because I get to carry that woman with me every single day.